am back again for another video. I um, just got into the office. I'm hoping that I'll be able to see a condition today that we can discuss. Um, sometimes lots of things come in, but we're just in the moment. Sometimes it's an emergency. Sometimes, you know, we just forget to videotape. But I'm, I'm really dedicated today to, to find something to show you guys something interesting that we can learn from. I know everybody is going through rough times because of, you know, all that's happening in the world today, but just take it one step at a time. Just keep moving, keep breathing, keep being grateful, and we'll see better days. Okay, so this is my 36-year-old um, female patient who came in for a swelling to the upper lid of her right eye. She noticed this swelling six days ago. It just came up all of a sudden. It wasn't a gradual start. She just woke up with this painful swelling to her eye. I'm just going to give you a look. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. I'm thinking I'm see. And under. Let's see if you can see under. Okay, so there's nothing much I'll tell you because there's nothing going on under the eye. So just that. It's a bit tender and very red in comparison to the other eye. So we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with her eye. All right, so as mentioned before, we're going to discuss eyelid swellings. Um, everybody has seen somebody with an eyelid swelling before. Um, sometimes we don't know what it is. We see pus coming from it sometimes. Sometimes it's it's just a little hard lump. So we're going to go into a little bit more detail as to what could possibly cause an eyelid swelling like this one. All right, so there are many causes for eyelid swellings, numerous. But today, for the, you know, in the interest of time, we're going to talk about the ones that cause inflammation. So redness and tenderness. So there are three one, three swellings to the eyelid that can cause redness and inflammation, like for a patient. Firstly, a chalazion. A chalazion is a small lump, like in this picture. It, you know, it's a swelling that is very focused to one area, and it comes up slowly over time. So it, it gradually gets bigger and bigger and bigger over weeks, so on, and then it gets really, you know, tender because it's so taut, that little, that single area. So that's the first type of inflammatory swelling. The second type is a hordeolum. Now, hordeolum, as opposed to the chalazion, the hordeolum comes up suddenly. So you go to bed one night and you wake up, you see this swelling on your eyelid, um, painful, tender, right? But it's also, just like the chalazion, localized to one area, just one little bump, lump area, right? So that's the hordeolum. So hordeolum comes up acutely overnight and the chalazion is gradually over time, but both are one single area. Now blepharitis is also a red and tender eyelid, but it's a more diffuse presentation. So the entire eyelid is red and tender. No single area is swollen, right? Okay, so based on the patient we had before, this is a reminder of our patient, you notice that her swelling is mostly in one area, this area here, and it came up, remember I said, she woke up one morning and she just saw this painful tender swelling. So, we have to agree that this is a hordeolum. All right, looking somewhere. All right, so what is a hordeolum? Hordeolum is basically an abscess or pus in the eyelid. Plain and simple. Abscess or, you know what the abscess is? Like a boy like, right? That is happening in the eyelid. How does that happen now? All right. So in your eyelashes, right? In the, the, the eyelash area, there is there are pores. Pores, just like on your skin, in the eyelashes, there are pores. The purpose for these pores are to drain glands that are in the eyelid. So the eyelid, has, the eyelid has glands that secrete like oils to kind of keep, you know, the eyelash moist and things like that. So the oil drains 
through the holes, which are the pores in the eyelashes. So what happens is that when any other eyelash, the, eye, the pores in the eyelash becomes blocked, then the glands in the eyelid can get to drain because it's blocked. So the, the secretions, now the oils get built up, built up, built up in one area in the eye. So that particular gland now just has, is trying to secrete, is trying to secrete, trying to secrete, and it cannot, right? Because the pore is blocked. All right. So the swelling is there, it's probably taut and a bit tender, but no bacteria, which sometimes is normal bacteria that is on your skin, but it, it gets into that it's a swollen area and the oil is nice and providing a nice little home for this bacteria and they just stay there and replicate and then what they get now is an infection of the eyelid and it's an abscess form because your body starts sending blood cells they want to say no something is going on something wrong here so so it's getting red and inflamed and pus start to build up in that eyelid now and that is basically a hardiola as to why your pore gets blocked, I don't know, maybe eyeliner, just random things. Uh, it's so random, it's so weird, it's so vast and varied causes of pore blockage. I mean, probably you never wash your face or whatever, whatever. So what the, the point is, the pore gets blocked. Right. Okay, so how do we go ahead and treat? Treatment starts with eye hygiene. So you have to you have to wash the eyelash line maybe twice a day to make sure that we try to clean the debris or the oil from the pore that is blocked. Make sense? Yes. All right. So we're going to use a Q-tip, properly called it, you know, it's an applicator, but we call it Q-tip. So use a Q-tip with maybe some tear-free shampoo, some baby shampoo, and we'll just wash the, the eyelash line and hopefully some of the some more water is blocking it. We'll clear you do that twice a day. So that's the first, that's the first part of it. Next part. Now, we all know that if we put warm rag or warm compress on our skin, the pores open up. So same reason now, we're going to warm some water. And we're going to do warm compresses two to three times a day on the, on the eyelid to open up the pores to allow the oils to drain. Make sense? All right. Next step now, all right, because there is a bacterial infection, we will need some antibiotics, right? So that can come in the form of an eye drop to prevent spread to adjacent glands, because remember, I know, it's just one little area, one gland that is infected. But what if it starts to spread to the other glands in the same eye? Infection spread. So we do antibiotic eye drops, sometimes oral antibiotics and pain medication. And even after all of that, sometimes we don't get any resolution. We have to go ahead, the doctor has to go ahead and to kind of drain the abscess or the hordeolum manually in a procedure similar to what you see in here. All right, so what if you decide to say, I'm gonna stay home, I'm not going to any doctor, I'm gonna watch this video, I'm gonna do the compresses, I'm gonna clean the eyelash line, we're not going to do antibiotics, all right? So remember, I know, even if you drain the oils that were there, the pore open up and so on, the bacterial infection is still there. So you can cause yourself a periorbital cellulitis or orbital cellulitis, which is basically an infection of the entire eye, which is dangerous. Everybody can glean why that is dangerous. It can also get even more serious, a cavernous sinus thrombosis, which is basically a blood clot behind the eyes. We're not going to detail with that. If you want, you can look that up. Also very serious. Even more serious, you can get an infection in your entire body just from that eyelid, you know. The infection spread to your entire body. So the moral of, of the story is, if you have what you think is a hordeolum based on what we talked about before, because now you know what a hordeolum is. So you won't be at home and say, yeah, I have a hordeolum. You know, say, I have to go into your doctor and seek treatment because you know what the complications may be. All right. So I hope you learn a little bit more about eyelid swellings, just a little bit more. And I hope it wasn't too complicated and I hope you, you know, use the knowledge appropriately. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and turn on your bell notification so that when I post these informative videos, 
you can learn and make use of it. All right, till next time, take care. Subscribe.